six bills before my committee, subordinate legislation, the whole shebang. And that's behind the scenes. So when you see John Lamont joking about, dotting about here, he's skiving. <laughs> this man is working, and he's not just working, he's working hard to deliver things for Scotland that will matter at the election. I'd like to thank Christine very much for coming. Um, we invited Christine because Christine is a great supporter of Paul's. Can you come? <laughs> <laughs> Callum's victory last year from uh, Christine taking the seat in the Bloody Inside Tweed Dale Lauderdale, um, that we have been making huge strides forward in this area. We have uh, now part of the administration of the council as well, and the party has, has moved on leaps and bounds. There's been a huge amount of teamwork that's gone over the years. <laughs> now I, um, I have something else to thank uh, Alex for. Clearly, Alex. Show sure, great faith in me being a minister in the Scottish Government. It's uh, close as a, a political nerd like me can come to the equivalent of pulling on a football, football jersey for Scotland or a rugby jersey for Scotland. Uh, it has been an incredible honour and a privilege to represent Scotland abroad, but also to represent the Scottish Government and to travel around what is one of the most outstanding countries in the world, I believe. We, uh, you know, with all the debate about independence and powers, uh, sometimes we are accused of, um, of being uh, too bullish about Scotland and its capabilities, but I have had the honour and privilege of going around this country seeing the beauty of our, our, our nation as environment minister, seeing the wildlife, the tremendous uh, landscapes, the, uh, the purity of our, our, our environment is something we should be incredibly proud of, our tremendous wildlife. I've seen communities across the length and breadth of this land, from the islands in the Northern Isles down to places like Mullet Gallery, and of course across the borders, being empowered uh, to take forward uh, their own futures by taking control of uh, land in places like Mullet Gallery, or even in places like Leetham, you may not be aware, who uh, Donald may be aware, um, with the Scottish Land Fund, we're able to buy the pub and bring it back into business and form a community hub. Um, I've seen across our country the fact that there are I see across our country the enormous capability of our people when they are given the chance to take control of their affairs, to turn their communities around, to turn their lives around, and I have absolute belief that as a country we can do exactly the same. So all we are asking for is to take control of our own affairs and to uh, have the ability to make our own choices. Because we have a government south of the border, which unfortunately by virtue of the fact that we have a, a union has control over many aspects of our society and clearly it's doing enormous damage in many areas of our life. And we still have a situation where we are not represented abroad in Europe and elsewhere uh, and our agricultural industry is being starved of cash that it's rightfully its uh, and yet we are blamed uh, as you see in recent uh, attacks by the Tories for the plight they face. Make no mistake our farmers are being shortchanged by the Tories, they are being misled by the Tories as to the reason why there are difficulties and we must uh, start getting that message across. But we are in a most tremendous part of Scotland. I think if you look around, as we all know the borders, we have some of the most amazing businesses, the most amazing uh, attractions and cultural heritage. I am very proud of this city. I believe our constituency is a jewel in the crown of Scotland and I believe it deserves the representation that can make it an area that others will envy. But we have low wages, we have tremendously hardworking people, uh, but we have to get investment into our economy to make sure that the hard work, the graph, the talent, the capability of our people is matched by the pay that they deserve and get them the kind of prospects and future for our young people that we absolutely must, uh, must strive for in this constituency. We have uh, a realistic choice between either John Lambert or myself in this constituency. So, uh, am I the kind of politician like John who 
uh, will go around getting selfies, getting himself in the papers. He may well be critical of me for not doing as much of that. No, I'm not. I, when I turn up to a meeting, I'm there for the duration. I come and add value. I contribute. I speak. I don't sit there uh, twiddling my thumbs and just popping in snipes at the SNP government all the time. When we had a flood in Hoyk, I was here for 40 hours in Hoyk during that flood. Uh, I started at 4.30 in the morning, uh, first place sitting at my office because I knew it was going to flood, and then went to help the community. And I didn't take a single picture. I even refused to have my picture taken on occasion, because uh, Ryan was trying to take a picture and I said, no, I'm not here for pictures and selfies. My counterpart was here for a short time, did a film interview, and then headed off to Goldstream and Kelso, and then posted into Dreamway on the internet that he'd been filling sandbags. Now, uh, I was there filling sandbags. I was Duncan Taylor <laughs> and various others. We didn't even see John Lamont. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not going to make false promises. I'm not going to make false claims about what I've done. I will work hard for the area. I will do my best. I will use the influence and experience that I have gained as a government minister under Alec and under Nicola. And I will use that to the advantage of the borders. I will fight for investment in our communities because I believe this area deserves investment. I will work with Caleb and Christine to try and get the railway extended to Carlisle. I will fight for communities in Berkshire to try and get railway in at Leston. We have to use intelligence yes. to articulate the case for these investments. There's no point just moaning at the government about not spending money here or there. You have to make the case. You have to fight your arguments and articulate them well and understand that in a tough financial climate, you have to use good evidence to get investment. <clears throat> so I'm a different kind of politician to John. So if you want somebody, or this community wants somebody to turn up, uh, get a picture, to appear for 10 minutes, disappear, and then say they were, say they were somewhere. If you want somebody to be rarely in Parliament, uh, yes. because he was not there for the budget vote this week, he was not there on Tuesday either. <laughs> These are important decisions being made in Parliament, and you're not being represented by your constituency MSP. If you want somebody who will turn up, take part, contribute, add value, and try and make a difference for the communities of the borders, vote for me. If you don't, vote for the other guy. In terms of... Um, Gold, you know, I hear cases where people say, what's the SNP government done for the borders? Well, how about a £353 million railway for a start? Yes. How about a £20 million high school for Kelso, which is about to be built? Yes. How about a £9.1 million a primary school in Dunst, which we should normally yes. try to use about? How about, um, you know, the 491 as housing association properties that have been built under this SME government in the borders yes. with government funding. And it's not just the direct funding support that we, that we give as a government that we should be proud of. We have also got policies that have been able to, to, to create community empowerment, as I say. We've got the Land Reform Bill going to the Parliament, the name of the doing a tremendous job getting that bill through and deserves our support. We have got the Community Empowerment Act which creates the, the right for communities to fight to have services under their control, not council control, where that is the case to be made. This is a government that's decentralising, we're accused of being centralising, we are decentralising. We're giving power back to communities. We're encouraging them to show aspiration and ambition for themselves and their country, because that is in our DNA. Giving power to people and making our country a better place to live. Our opponents talk our country down. They say you can't empower communities, you can't give land to communities, you can't do this, you can't do that. We're the ones that are standing up for communities and giving them the power back. On justice, we get kicked by the opposition. We put a 41 year low in crime. Yes. Even in this area, in the borders, 41% reduction in crime since we came to office. You would be more You would be for thinking it was Rest out there, given the, some of the accusations from the Tories and the Dems. So a 41 year low of crime, just as true here as it is for anyone else. And Christine studies these things closely and those we just went in to see Joe Emery last week, very positive figures yes. on youth crime in other areas, but you'd never know it if you listen to the opposition. And when it came to the fire rescue services and the floods in Hoyt and Selkirk and other places, Coldstream, 
The Fire Rescue Service, because it's a single force, was able to send agents from all over East Central Scotland to come down and help us in the borders. If there'd been a separate Fire Rescue Service, they'd have had to get permission. Yes. They'd have to phone up and get permission to send vehicles across the boundary. That's how absurd it was in the past. Now, they send them out and then they ask later. They come down when they needed and are controlled and are very effective. We didn't hear any complaints, or I haven't to date, of how that service is done. So we have been making great strides forward in public services. On our NHS, you know, we have a tremendous record. When we're compared uh, to, in terms of our, our record on action emergency, let's remember that the target we set, the target we're trying to achieve, is 10% better than the Liberal Democrats and Labour target in the past. I know people get bored talking about targets, but it's 10% better. They never once, in the entire eight years they were in power, achieved anything like the figures we're achieving now in the NHS. Now that's not down to ministers, that's down to the hard work of the NHS staff. But why are we being hit for performance? It's 10% better than the And we have seen that I've seen in this month, as of Callum, as of Christine, sadly we have had job losses in our constituencies. In places like Bergen's and Eyemouth, or Hoyt Nipplier, Hoyt Co, and other companies like uh, Board of Precision and Kelso. But I've been hugely impressed by the response from our government. It compares extremely favourably to that uh, in place south of the border. Our business minister, Fergus Ewing, and John Swinney, our deputy first minister, pull out the stops and they put in the effort to try and get people back into work. It's a multi-agency approach, it's very successful, and I think as of about two weeks ago, of the Hoyt Network employees that were laid off before Christmas, almost half of them are doing jobs, and it's getting better week by week. And I've, I've heard about similar stories for those at Border Precision. So that's a government that cares. A government that cares and puts in the effort, as did the council, to be fair, to try and get people back into work. So we have got good public services in Scotland. We have got a government we can be proud of. I hope you feel you've got a candidate you can be proud of. And we should have no qualms whatsoever about going out there and knocking seven bells out the Tories. And winning a seat. <laughs> we have to step up though. We have got a chance, the best chance we may ever have to take this seat and then to hold it. And I think that is in the interest not only of Scotland, to rid ourselves of a party that is doing us no good, and to ensure that we have the kind of representation that this area needs, and the kind of influence, hopefully, where I can speak for the borders at the top table, and I can fight for the kind of change that we need at Scotland level as well. But uh, I'm greatly honoured to be your candidate. I am extremely thankful for all the help you have given me and will give me, I'm sure, the campaign ahead. But um, I will do my damnest for you, and let's win this thing. Thank you very much. Yeah.